finished your coffee, Gonzalo. Is it hot? <laughs> Boiling. Here. You must be tired from your trip to Baguio. Not at all, Nita. Two whole weeks? Long enough for me. I was lonely. Were you? Of course, Gonzalo. I forgot to tell you. I dismissed the maid this morning. I couldn't stand her insolent ways. Cora? Insolent? Never noticed it. She was quite efficient. It seems to me you've had her for a good many years. No, Gonzalo, remember? We got here when we were married. And we have been married for only seven months. Do you know that the price of canned goods have gone up? And it took me a long time before I could find the right shoes for this dress. Luckily, I found what I wanted for a residence. By the way, Menchie came this afternoon and brought me the towels. Hmm? You are listening, Gonzalo. Who did you say come? Manchu. I had your initial the towels. They turned out to be perfectly charming. Your initials are in blue. You said somebody came this afternoon? <laughs> yes, Manchu. The woman who does the embroidery. Ah. Yes, Nina. Sorry. Who else? No one else, Gonzalo. Nita? Yes? How come? What do you mean? What are you all dressed up for? Like it? Exquisite. I'm glad it's your taste. I'm really trying it for the big day tomorrow. Tomorrow? You haven't forgotten, Gonzalo? Frankly, it escapes my memory. Our wedding! Sorry, bro. Anniversary. Our first anniversary? No, no, Gonzalo. We have only been married for, uh, for only seven months. We decided during our honeymoon, remember? To celebrate our anniversary every and every month of our marriage. Ah, uh, this beautiful forgetful memory of mine. I know it has been getting worse lately. Two weeks ago, before we went up to Baguio, we celebrated at Jayalai. That's where we met for the first time. A year ago. Or like it, definitely. Well, I am flattered. Husbands are so hard to please these days. Where did we celebrate last month? We went to Hilton. And the month before that? May I refresh your failing memory? The month before that, we had supper at Bon Buffon. And the previous month, we went to La Parella. And afterwards, to Manila Hotel for dancing. The first month? We went to La Panceteria at Carval Street. Couldn't we go tomorrow to another Panceteria and just have Chopo and Luke Arscaldo? Oh no, Gonzalo. I want to show off my beautiful dress. As you wish, Nita. Know something? You look as beautiful and as young as the night we met. But Gonzalo, do you expect me to turn an old hag so soon? I must buy you a present then. What would you like? How much can you afford? The sky's the limit. Is business that good? I closed a big deal in Baguio. I saw a diamond bracelet at Australia. How much? That simply took my breath away. How much? A bargain, practically. How much of a bargain? Ten thousand? That's too much, I know. I was only kidding. But you didn't say sky's the limit, so... You heard that right, Nita. Bye. <laughs> oh, Gonzalo, thank you. I'm so lucky to have a husband like you.
Dito? Did a man come this afternoon? Um, a man? Why, no. I mean, I sent a man to fix the CTV set. No, nobody came. Except for Menchu. But there's nothing wrong with our TV, Gonzalo. I was just watching my favorite TV show half an hour ago. I'm sorry. An agent was selling me a new TV set this morning, and I thought that I bought it. Oh, what am I saying? Splendid memory of mine, Nita. <laughs> and you, at the scripted age of 27. Coffee's too warm? It is. What's that, Gonzalo? Cyanide. Cyanide? Potassium cyanide. Is it dangerous? It should be. People are known to commit murder and suicide with it. Is it that fatal? Those are the rumors. Why do you carry it around with you? Oh, just a joke. Gonzalo, carrying poison isn't a joke. Well, it isn't the kind of joke that average people would indulge in. And but, Nita, don't bother your pretty little head about it. Cyanide is sold in drugstores. And you would order closing drugstores because of it, would you? Why in heaven's name are you carrying around cyanide with you? It isn't just ordinary poison. It's an unusual one. I use it in my business. Cyanide is a necessary ingredient in the plating process. We couldn't do without it. I understand now, Gonzalo. But I still think you should throw it away. Gonzalo! Will you stop worrying? You can throw away it later. But the cup! You can throw away the cup and the cyanide together. But the cup is from my favorite coffee set. Adrian gave it to us. He did? It was his wedding present. Oh, Gonzalo, your memory. I can always buy you another one. You won't find another like it. Even if you look all over town. One set is as good as the other. No, it isn't, Gonzalo. The sentimental value. People attach too much importance to sentimental value. One should attach himself to nothing and to nobody. How could you say that, Gonzalo? Attach oneself to nothing and to nobody? Don't I mean anything to you? And Adrian? Your best friend? You've always been so attached to him. Sorry, Nita. Business worries and all that sort of thing. You know how deeply attached I am to you. And to Adrian. And to Adrian. The doctor told you time and time again to take good care of your hyperthyroid. You refused to take Google. She also told you to avoid any emotional strain. I know, Nita. I know. All this irritability and my high, strong condition. You should have taken a good rest in Baguio, instead of rushing about with your business. I did try my best to rest up there, but something unexpected came up. Something. I got through with my business sooner than I expected. Something unexpected? Something serious? No, nothing important really. By the way, has Adrian been around? Not since you left two weeks ago. Does he know I'm back? How could he? You arrived only a few hours ago. Nita, please bring me some whiskey, please. You know what your cousin Chita once said at a party? She said that Filipinos who have bars in their homes are cheap imitators of Hollywood and the American ways. And guess what else she said? What? She's still drinking in one's home is a sign of decadence. Can you imagine her insolence? Perhaps she's right. Nita, perhaps you're becoming decadent. No? Oh, Adrian. Well, talking about the devil, Nita and I were just talking about him. 
Uh, I arrived a few hours ago. Where are you now? In the drugstore across the street? Well, drop over. Right now? No, no. Me and I are still awake. I'll give you exactly one minute. What did he want? Nothing. He said he was calling from the drugstore. How do you know I was back? He probably heard about it. Naturally. I'll get the whiskey. Adrian's here. When did you get back? Did you know I was back? Uh, I miss you, Gonzalo. I knew that. Uh, stepping up? Why, this? No. I was just trying it on. Whiskey, Adrian. You know I never touched it. How about some coffee? I don't mind. Where have you been hiding yourself? I've been very busy lately. Why did you call me just now, Adrian? Uh, my cigarette, please. Uh, the blading, uh, finish. It was ready before I left Pagli. I have it right here. Mm. Look, you won't recognize it. It looks brand new. Oh, this was a gift from college graduation, remember? Yes, I remember. The sales lady told me it was gold, but it turned out to be gold plated. You're looking fine, Gonzalo. Frankie had lost a few pounds. By the way, Adrian, were you here this afternoon? Yes, Gonzalo. At what time? About two. Uh, the maid told me that Nita was leaving, so I left. I left. Oh, so uh, perhaps I thought that you already arrived on Baguio, and haven't the maid told you? Uh, yes, she told me. Ouch! Boiling! Gonzalo likes it that way. Hmm. I'll wait a little bit to cool off. Cool off. As to wish. You know what your friend Gonzalo said earlier? Uh, unless you tell me. He said, and I quote, One should attach himself to no nothing and to nobody. Did you really, Gonzalo? I don't remember. Imagine Gonzalo talking like that. When he talked so much about you before we got married. In fact, once or twice, we had a quarrel because he insisted on repeating. Adrian said this, and Adrian did that, and Adrian and I did this. How old were you when you became friends? I was about 10 then. Adrian and I went to grade school together. You managed to be classmates all the time? We managed. But how aren't you older? By tad years. Once in seventh grade, the teacher insisted to put us in different sections. The teacher thought that I was smart and should be in section A. But Adrian went to the principal's office and pleaded. But I won. <laughs> we voted in the same section. Section A? No, uh, section C. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian looked so boyish then. He was considered to be the best looking in school. That is why I used to tease him and call him Babyface. He still retains much of that Babyface-like <laughs> expression, doesn't he? Adrian had a characteristic then. Yeah, what was that? Mind you, I'm not saying you still have it. Besides, it wasn't anything unusual. A characteristic? Adrian was seldom satisfied with what he had once in high school. I see your memory is getting better, Gonzalo. Yes. Strange how oftentimes our memory vividly relieves incidents hidden in our past. Go ahead. You were saying? Well, my mother gave me on my birthday a linen suit. Adrian liked it so much, he insisted on borrowing it on every Sunday. He had other suits, but he fell in love to that particular one. What happened? <laughs> I finally gave it to him. <laughs> I don't recall that incident. And on another occasion, Nita, guess what? I found this afternoon while looking over some papers. Some pictures of our wedding. Not becoming sentimental at an early stage of our marriage, Nita? I know, but Adrian was best man. And he looked so funny in one of the pictures. He was staring at me, 
while you, Gonzalo, was looking at somewhere else. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any, any wedding pictures here. I'll get them. What's wrong? I, uh, I'm in trouble. Again. Financially? How much is it this time? Quite a sum. A thousand? Mm, two and a half. Poker? Raise and high alive. You never change. Any moment problems? Thanks. Uh, you know I never have much use of it. It's about time you started looking for someone to settle down with. If I have, find the right woman. In your idea of a right woman? You know what my idea is the right girl. I still remember it. She must be serious, intelligent, and she must be a virgin. And... Can you find a woman like that nowadays? There are many, I admit. But if you look hard enough... Here it is. Gonzalo <laughs> looks scared of something. I was. The last words in the ritual, till death do us part, was still ringing in my ears. The doctor had just told me. It might live up to 70. <laughs> Look who's talking. I hope to live up to 80 myself. You know, Adrian was always an idealist. That's why he wasn't married yet. Is he's even 24? 25. <laughs> I like the cold blooded callousness of men, which reveal their age. I remember during our college days, Adrian fell in love once. When he found out the girl was a regular had a regular boyfriend, he gave her up. But if the girl was engaged? She wasn't. And even if she were, that doesn't stop men from going after her. Men's tremendous conceit. And you still have those ideals, Adrian? Adrian will never change. Don't rush it. Why? Or give up those ideals. Why? Well, people sometimes, after, they, after their ideals, as they grow old, older, don't they? You're right. People shouldn't hold on their original ideals too long. Want a drink, Adrian? I don't drink. Just try once, Adrian. Alright. Have you read this afternoon's paper? Haven't had time. There's an interesting item on the front page. What about? About a murder last night. I shudder at the mere sound of the word murder. <laughs> You never can tell, Nita. Someday, you or I might be a witness of one. Oh, not me. Suppose we're walking along Escolta and somebody sticks a knife into or shoots somebody. Shall we doze our eyes and pretend we didn't see it? That would be different. But I know I'll be careful not to be around when a crime takes place. What was the last night case? Uh, you know Mr. and Mrs. Tito Viterbo? The prominent attorney, you mean? Not the Viterbo, married to Miller Villa? You know her? Very well. Mila and I were classmates in the same convent school. At Anushaka. A very religious woman, according to the paper. She never missed going to Kiapa Church every Friday afternoon. You know, the Nazarene. She was the most religious girl in class. The papers say she used to meet her lover in Kiapa Church. Did anything happen to Mila? It seems Tito Viterbo's best friend was having an affair with Tito's wife. I can't believe it of Mila. Mr. Viterbo killed his friend? No. He killed his wife. Poor Mila. Unfortunately, wasn't it? <laughs> Unfortunate? My eye? Stupid, rather. But why? Gonzalo, 
How can you be so callous? After all, he had the right to kill her. Because she was unfaithful to him. Decades ago, that might have been justified. But in an enlightened age like ours, killing a faithless wife or her lover speaks none too highly of the husband's sense of proportion. What an idea, Gonzalo! To kill the wife because she isn't faithful is for the husbands to admit that he has lost her. And if you lose something or somebody, don't you think that it's most probable through our own carelessness? The sense of possession is strong in every love. Granted, in every generation when material things were few and expensive, one could understand and pierce the desire of possess and hold on to something. Gonzalo, you can confuse love with material. I'm not confusing them. True love isn't a material thing. It's intangible, spiritual, capable of touching the stars, reaching the infinite, embracing God. Poetry, Gonzalo. No, Nita. True. <laughs> but not all marriages are born of love. Then what then? Of passion. And if it is passion in your marriage, to lose the object of your passion need not, should necessarily be tragic. What would you have had Mr. Vertigo do then? Forgiving his wife. But Mr. Vertigo, wives, was guilty of breaking the fourth commandment. The sixth, Gonzalo. Oh, <laughs> right. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, but I know the ninth. Thou shalt not covet the neighbor's wife. Splendid. Your memory is improving. There's one word that has disappeared from the vocabulary of the moderns. What word? The word adultery. The moderns have such a revolving dread of such an ugly, repulsive, old-fashioned word that they have substituted for it. So and so as having an affair with or is in love with someone else. And similar, charming, harmless phrases. But the word adultery itself they avoid in a board. The moderns, adultery doesn't exist anymore. Your narrative surprised me, Gonzalo. Levity aside, if I had my way, I have a name for Vertibus, lover and wife. And that is? Uh, I call them a couple of rats. <laughs> That's interesting, Adrian. Why? In heaven's name? Adultery is punctual by law, isn't it? If I may be permitted to stretch the point further, I'd prefer to call them three rats. Why include the poor husband? For breaking the fifth commandment, thou shall not kill. Another, Adrian? If you don't mind, I'd like some coffee. Oh, I forgot to bring in the cups. Don't bother. Here's one. What do you use that cup for? I don't mind. Gonzalo, that cup. I don't believe in germs in you. It isn't that. Adrian is right, Nita. One cup is as good. Is she ill? If you call expecting a baby. No. Oh, congratulations. It's too early to tell. She'll be alright. Women insist on deluding themselves that they can be equal of men. They're pregnant. They, wa they wake up from their trances. Oh, Gonzalo! Oh, stupid of me. Uh, go upstairs. I'll get you a clean towel. Adrian knows his way up around. He's like one of the family. There's a clean towel in the bathroom. What are you trying to do? What are you saying? The cup, Gonzalo, the cup. Throw it away, throw it away. Shut up, bitch. Don't do it, don't. So you're saying no one came here this afternoon? Adrian admitted it. No, no. That's why you dismissed Cora. You were afraid that she would talk. I had my suspicions. That's why I went to Baguio. I wanted to give you and Adrian the satisfaction of that last evil fling. Gonzalo, Gonzalo! Both of you lying, pretending behind my back. True, true. I'm so ashamed. Ashamed? You know the meaning of the word? I don't know why I did it. I don't know. Now you know, and it's too late. What are you going to do? Destroy him. Adrian? You're quite a psychic, my beloved. Let me again go! But my love for him is deeper. 
and they must destroy it. But not this way, not this callous way. Give him another chance. For a rat like him? If you must destroy, destroy me then. Spare Adrian. He means that much to you, my dear? No, not now, not anymore. Spare Adrian. But there must be some pity left in you. There's a tiny bit of pity, but it's not for Adrian. I'm reserving it for you. Destroy me then. I'm just as guilty. No, Nita. I cannot destroy you. I'll let you live, eat, breathe, sleep every second of your cursed life with an ugly word adultery in your heart. I'd rather die. I'd rather be destroyed. You must live, my dear. Dying is so easy. And why would you die if there's so much ahead of you? There's nothing. Nothing ahead of me now. Your feelings are a matter of indifference to me. Soon, you'll be seeing a crime. Your beloved and my beloved friend will die the death of a rat. I won't stand it. I won't. I won't. I can't. You're going to stay here and not utter a single word, nor at least a gesture. Even though I know you're not an intelligent woman, I know you know what I mean. Come here, my dear. Let me take you to this chair. You need rest. Everything all right there, Adrian? It was nothing, for sure. Take your coffee. Sorry, I must get another one. Take your cup first. All right. She's still worse. Nothing serious. You should get in and get some rest. Don't you think? She will. Presently. Good. The coffee's still hot. Still warm? Just right. Oh, Adrian. It's probably cold by now. Don't bother me. Stop being so fuzzy. This is me. Nita. Sometimes, Adrian, I think you're better off as a bachelor. Well, well, why am I going to advise you to get married? You should, Adrian. You should. Well, I'm not ready yet to settle down. Aren't you afraid to die a bachelor? <laughs> I expect to live a little longer. A little longer is right. My head. So what's wrong? It hurts. I don't know. Sit down. You'll feel better. <clears throat> My throat. I can't breathe. An aspirin will do you good. <clears throat> Co the coffee? Could it be? No, I don't think so. The whiskey, maybe? Hmm? You need it? Yes, first time, you know. <laughs> By the way, Will the 2,000 and a half be enough? I could lend you more. Thanks, Gonzalo. You've been such a wonderful friend. Friendship is onto the grave. <clears throat> and beyond it. <clears throat> yes, even beyond it. <clears throat> I sometimes wonder, <clears throat> what will I do or where will I be without you, Gonzalo? Uh, <clears throat> shut up, baby face. <laughs> it's been a long time since you called me baby face. High school days. Lie down, Adrian. You need rest. Maybe, maybe the light's are you. Just rest, Adrian. No, I need to tell you something. Not now. Tomorrow. Now. Very important. Very important. I am attached to nothing and to nobody. Police Department? If you come here at 60 Bayaba Street, Forbes Park, you'll find three rats. Yes, yes, you heard me right. Three rats. <laughs>